Jasmine Howard from College Station, Texas, where seventh-ranked Notre Dame will be taking on 20th-ranked Texas A&M. Des, good morning. Great to see you. Excited we have football, and I'm going to dive right in because there's a lot we want to tackle with you. Uh, before we get to that game, Desmond, what a game last night. Prime in Colorado. What was your biggest takeaway from that? Wow, there's a lot to unpack from that game. First, you have to um, look at Coach Prime and the sp position situation he's in today. Anytime you can win a game, but you know your team didn't play its best football, coaches love that because you got the W, but you have the film, you have tape. Now you can go in there and you can rip your players about the things that they did not do well. So to me, it's a win-win situation for Coach Prime and for his staff. Then you look at Travis Hunter is just I mean, he's phenomenal. I mean, this guy is a once-in-a-generation talent that we haven't seen in, in decades. To play offense and defense the way he plays is just incredible. To make those catches was just spectacular. I think that Travis Hunter right now is like, the, he's the front runner for the Heisman. There's no doubt about that. To me, it's Travis Hunter versus the field. But for him to play as many snaps as he as he plays at an extremely high level just speaks to the conditioning and into his football IQ too. This kid is unbelievable. And then Shadur Sanders again, mature, developed understands the game, yeah. very poised. Even when he escapes pressure, he's always looking with his eyes down the field, surveying the area and making sure that he throws missiles to his receivers. So those two are bona fide, qualified superstars. And uh, man, I tell you what, but Prime's got to get the, the trenches together. Impressed by the fact that the first half, they kind of struggled, but any good, great coaching staff, they make Excellent second half adjustments, mm -hmm. and that's what Colorado was able to do to walk away with the victory last last yeah. night. Looking like two top five picks. SA, are, do you care if I just roll to the next question here? Well, since keep, we go got ahead and roll. Go ahead okay. and roll. We want to hear Des. Get in, I want to hear Des. I want to get into this one. <laughs> Des, talk to me about Notre Dame. Are they a lock to get into the CFP with a win against A&M tomorrow? Molly, I believe so, because you look at this schedule, it looks kind of light. Um, after this game, if they're able to come to Kyle Field, which is a very hostile environment, and walk out of here with a W, then I think they'll be favorites in every game that they play. And, uh, yeah, you look at the, the Georgia Tech game, October 19th, that may be a, a very challenging game just because of Georgia Tech's offense and what they did to Florida State. November 9th, they played for Florida State. We'll see if Florida State able to bounce back Monday night against Boston. Boston College from the loss that they suffered to the hands of Georgia Tech in Dublin. But overall, when you look at their schedule, it seems like it's kind of light. So if they can uh, walk out of Kyle Field tomorrow night with the victory, it seems like they, um, they should cruise to the college football playoff. Well, listen, they're going to cruise to the college football playoffs if they win this game because Anytime somebody has an opportunity to give a break to Notre Dame fighting Irish, it seems that they do so. They haven't won a national championship since 1988. All right. We saw what last last time they showed up in the college football playoffs and went up against Alabama. We saw there's a difference between the <laughs> yeah. meat and potato brothers and, for, and folks from, yep. from, from, you know, South Bend, Indiana. But in the end, but in the end, exactly. I like Coach Freeman a lot. I, I, I like what they're doing. I know the man can recruit. I think they're on an upward tra trajectory. Uh, but let's see how they look tonight. I'm going to be real interested in seeing Saturday night. I'm sorry, how they look against Texas A&M. All right, Des, here's the yeah, next I one too. I have it's for you. Be a oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're no, all saying, good. So, because it's so loud, one, one thing to look at is the trenches. Um, you look at Notre Dame offensive line. Their offensive line brings in two offensive tackles who are new, who are young, who are inexperienced, and Kyle Field is one of the loudest football fields in all of college football. So, you know, make sure you watch those guys. False starts, off the ball, late, things of that nature may affect Notre Dame's offense because of the noise. Okay, another one that we have, obviously, is LSU-USC. So I asked Paul Feinbaum earlier what would be his biggest headline after week one, and he said that Lincoln Riley can't turn this around. What do you think will be the biggest headline after week one in college football? 
Well, I think the biggest headline just might be what's going on with uh, James Franklin at Penn State. I have them on upset alert. They have to travel to Morgantown and play just a, an ornery, stubborn, you know, hard-nosed West Virginia Mountaineers team that's out to prove a point. I think that Neil Brown has those guys playing at a very high level and believing in each other. And one thing that I saw Neil Brown say is that he connected his football team to the culture of the people in Morgantown. So once you're able to do that as a head coach and your players buy in, then they've bought into something that's bigger or greater than themselves. So I think that they're going to come out, they understand this is a, a great opportunity for them to make a statement game against a highly ranked Penn State. So the, the storyline just might be what happened to the Nittany Lions down in Morgantown. Well, you say in Morgantown, what the hell happened to them, period? I mean, they look good, and then they go up against Ohio, Ohio State, and they lose. They go up against Michigan. They lose, and then as, as a result, they're out, outside of the playoffs looking in, and they're not that enthused about right. it. They don't commit, you know, just <laughs> go, going AWOL and stuff like Florida State did, sending third stringers to go up against Georgia. But nevertheless, <laughs> they didn't show up against Ole Miss in the, post, in the postseason either because, obviously, they weren't in the playoffs. Can James Franklin get Penn State's program – over the hump, particularly with the playoff system now being 12 teams instead of four? That's the question. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, you, you hit it on the head with that because they got 12 teams now. So there's an opportunity for them to get into the college football playoff, even with right. one or two losses, depending Damn on right. how things unfold in the Big Ten. So we'll see. Okay, it's never too early for predictions. I asked Stephen A. earlier a Super Bowl prediction, which he says it's fluid, but I'm not going to allow Slew. that. He's got Slew. a repeat. He's got the trilogy. <laughs> um, Mina has the Chiefs, too. <laughs> Mike T. <laughs> has the Packers. He <laughs> went with the dark horse. <laughs> so uh, it's first take. You know what we do here, Des? Who will be in the national championship game? Ooh, well, I'm going to go with um, the Georgia Bulldogs versus the Oregon Ducks. I think Ooh. that Dylan Gabriel, the new quarterback out there, uh, and Eugene is going to get the Ducks in, over the hump. So I like Oregon versus Georgia, and I'm going to go with the Ducks winning it all. Hammer!